Introducing Creation Club, a collection of new game content for Skyrim and Fallout 4, including new weapons, new armor, new outfits and accessories, new crafting and housing features, even new gameplay enhancements. Using Creation Club is easy. Browse the selection in-game by category and use credits to download right there. Your new content will appear automatically. Before I begin this video, I feel it's important to establish that Bethesda is responsible for some of my favourite video games of all time. I dread to think how many hours I've spent playing the likes of Fallout 4, Fallout 3, New Vegas, Skyrim and Oblivion. I have to admit I, I'm more of a newer fan to uh, their games. My, my first Bethesda game was Oblivion, The Elder Scrolls. I, I'm, I've never played Morrowind, I, I'm not one of the old guard. But you know, over the past few years I've really enjoyed some of their games and as I say, spent so many hours on them. Skyrim is one of my favourite games of all time after being blown away by Oblivion. I was so excited for the release of Skyrim. I bought it day one. I played countless hours on my Xbox 360 version. Then I moved to a gaming PC and spent countless hours on that. And more recently, I bought the PS4 edition and spent countless hours on that. I really, I, I would be scared to know how much time I've spent on Skyrim alone, let alone their other great games. I feel like I want to establish this because it really pains me that I'm about to make a video where I'll be criticising Bethesda and I, I really don't want to do this video but I, I feel like it's an important discussion to have regarding the video game industry. So, you know, whilst I will be criticising Bethesda and calling them out on some things I don't think are fair to the consumers, uh, you know, I want to establish that this isn't me just trying to smash Bethesda or jump on a bandwagon. As I say, I, I think they've made some great games. I imagine they'll make more great games in the future. However, I feel this topic is one that needs to be discussed. Earlier this year at E3, at Bethesda's press conference, the company announced the Creators Club, which would see people be able to create mods for Bethesda games like Fallout 4 and Skyrim and then upload them to this creators club where players could pay for the mods, download them and then use them in their game. Now this attracted plenty of criticism when it was first announced not only because gamers don't like the idea of paid mods where mods are traditionally free but they also tried this about last year when they announced that you would have to pay for mods on Steam. Now this received a huge amount of criticism and the idea was eventually scrapped and mods became free again. However, it seems like Bethesda's trying again with the Creators Club. They, you know, they, they don't seem to have learned a lesson from the backlash they received when they first tried to get people to pay for mods. Now, you could argue what's the problem with paying for mods and the problem is that mods traditionally are made by fans of the game not by the original developers and as you probably know they come in all shapes and sizes some mods add new content new characters armor skins whilst others stabilize the game perhaps improve the frame rate or patch bugs that developers haven't patched but either way mods have a precedent of being free they always have been they would you would think would always be however it seems like Bethesda at least is trying to change this now personally I don't have a problem with modders perhaps having a patreon account or something where people who enjoy their content can throw a few bucks their way in order to help them pay the rent so they can then create more mods you know I, I can understand that you know um, I mean they're doing out of love for the game they're not being paid by the developer so not all uh, modders choose to do that some have it optional but you know I, I think that's fair enough however as I say mods themselves have traditionally been free I could go online now and download as many mods as I want for various games and not expect to pay any money so it's easy to see why gamers, uh, especially PC gamers in particular, are uh, feeling pretty sore at Bethesda right now. You know, um, I mean, they've already tried this once and they kind of got their hand slapped. And 
now it, it really just seems like they're trying again to push this through despite the fact they've already been told unanimously by gamers that this isn't something we want now the creation club has gone live earlier this week and so far it really hasn't changed anyone's perception the mods that are there again you pay for them and from what i've been seeing and from what other people have been showing the the mods that you pay for through the creation club seem to be either as good or of less quality than mods you could get for free they, they're really they're no better and in some cases they're worse and in many cases they're merely new skins or you know uh colors to to clothes and stuff there, there's really no uh no sizable content released so far now it is early days so it would make sense they'd start off with small stuff and then bring in bigger mods as time goes by however so far it the impression hasn't been great for the creators club there there's really been no reason shown why you should support the creators club over modders you know who release their things for free another reason why people have been you know resistant to bethesda's paid mods is that it kind of slaps existing modders in the face i mean as much as i enjoy bethesda games you have to admit that i mean they're known for being really buggy usually the bugs aren't too bad but i mean even still in skyrim there are game breaking bugs to be found which bethesda is either unable or hasn't bothered to patch out now thanks to modders on the pc version at least there are numerous mods you can download which stabilize the game which tackle a lot of the problems prevent quests from becoming bugs bugged prevent you know your save file from from being useless by your character getting into a glitch or situation where you can't continue you know and and so in that regard modders have really been an asset to bethesda when they release something that is filled with bugs they can know that the modders will stabilize it for them and so the fact that they're now kind of pulling the rug out from modders feet you know it, it kind of isn't really a show of gratitude is it i mean you know when you release when you buy a game you expect the developers to have gone to as much effort as possible to make sure it's bug free and that it works now that's not you know when a big game especially you know open world rpgs are released it's you know it's acceptable for there to be bugs in it but you would hope that the developer would then support the game with updates and fixes but that's to did do this initially for their games but we've got to a point now where no new updates are really being rolled out and so any existing bugs now will likely exist forever and you know if it wasn't for the pc modding community you know throwing out fixes and helping gamers have a more enjoyable experience with bethesda games then you know Bethesda games wouldn't enjoy such a good reputation of having fun games if every minute you were encountering a bug that either broke your game or pulled you out of the immersion at least. So, it, you know, it, it seems like they kind of haven't thought of the fact that modders really help Bethesda games in the long run, even if they do create content that doesn't turn a profit for the company itself. Controversy has also been noted with the fact that an article which was published online uh, before Fallout 4 was officially released. I'll link to the article below in the description so you can check it out. In that article, one of the developers of Fallout 4 is asked outright, will there be microtransactions in Fallout 4? And he answers no. Now, it is true, there are no microtransactions in Fallout 4. But one could argue that the addition of the Creators Club adds microtransactions because you're essentially spending you know a little bit of money here a little bit of money there for new skins you know new weapons equipment and perhaps you'll be spending even more money as bigger mods paid mods come out for you to play so it kind of seems like this is a game that launched without any microtransactions and is now having microtransactions added which 
I mean, as far as I know, is unprecedented. I, I've never known of a game to be released completely free of microtransactions and then have them added later, especially a game that's single player like Fallout 4 and Skyrim. You know, these games have no multiplayer. There's no, you know, kind of uh, hats to buy like in Team Fortress, you know, it's, it. They're not like cosmetic items you could get for your multiplayer characters. This is a, these are single player games, so it seems very odd to have microtransactions added to them years after the release. Now that the Creators Club has rolled out, yet another issue has reared its ugly head, which is the fact that even if you decide to play Fallout or Skyrim, and you have no interest in buying or downloading mods for it, you just want to play the normal game, or you have no interest, in, You perhaps you are going to download mods, but not from the Creators Club. The problem is now is that the Creators Club has been baked into the base game. So if you go and boot up your copy of Skyrim or Fallout, there will be an update waiting for you, which I believe is two gigabytes, which adds the Creators Club to it. And what's incredibly frustrating about this is the fact that essentially what's happening is all the mods that are available for the game, you'll download to your game. And then if you choose to purchase any of them, you'll then be essentially purchasing the license to have the mod in your game. So essentially what this is, is on disc DLC, which, you know, gamers hate, it sucks. Personally, I hate it. I think it's a really bad business practice. And it seems crazy to me that Bethesda decided to force everyone essentially to have some kind of dealing with the Creators Club by forcing them to have to download every new mod that's released for the games onto the game when they launch it up, if you see what I mean. You're essentially being forced to download all the mods, but you can't access them because they're hidden behind a paywall. And, you know, not only is that shady, I think, I I also think that, you know, it it's just incredibly frustrating for gamers. If, if you've no intention of getting into the Creators Club, then you're still gonna have to deal with updates and, you know, the fact that, this content will be downloading to your game, but you won't have access to it unless you pay for it. Um, some people have also been reporting that the Creative Club mods ha are clashing with free mods that they've downloaded. Now, personally, I haven't tested this for myself, so I can't say firsthand whether it works, but reports of that have been circulated lately. So, you know, if you've got some mods you really like that you downloaded for free for Skyrim, say, and then, you know, you, I mean, you go for a mod from the Creators Club, it seems like they may or may not be compatible together, which is terrible. I, I mean, you know, who does Bethesda think that, players are going to pick over the free modders or the Bethesda club, which doesn't have nearly as much to offer. So, you know, I, I think I can definitely see why people are very upset. And I feel like Bethesda really has made some poor decisions with the Creators Club. I mean, at the very least, you would hope with the Creators Club that, you know, you could just completely ignore it and not have to deal with it at all if you're not into it. But it seems like that's not the case. You're still going to have to be waiting for downloads and updates related to the Creators Club, even if you want no part in it. And, you know, I, I think that's a really poor decision to make. Now, one hopes that a lot of these issues currently ring their heads with this new edition, are just teething issues, and that as the club rolls on you know over the next coming months but they're still iron out these kinks and you know one would hope that they'll quickly make it so, so that people who don't want anything to do with the the club you know won't have to download updates for it and stuff uh, but all the same the fact that you know you're essentially paying for on disc dlc i think is really you know i'm not a fan of that i you know but there's i'm sorry you've made some great games that i've loved but i think the way you've handled this whole creators club has just been really poor and communicating it with gamers and you know it, it just really seems like this is something the company has decided to go ahead with regardless of how gamers feel and you know I just don't think that would you any, fr uh, any friends in the long run and you know I mean look at companies like EA and stuff that in the past have nickel and dimed gamers their reputation is in the gutter right now and it would be such a shame to see a company as great as Bethesda sink to those levels but, you know, the way things are going at the moment, 
they really seem like they're kind of not doing themselves any favours. It's really absurd. It, it's like the company is kind of self-sabotaging itself by going ahead with these plans. You know, no one else is having to do this. Bethesda's doing it to themselves, which is a great shame. It's also worth noting that the fact mods are free means that they can often keep a game alive long after it was originally released. I mean, look at Half-Life. That You know, that was a game released in the 90s, and yet it's still played loads today thanks to mods that help you know update the game keep it feeling smooth there are all kinds of mod that mods that add new content there are mods that make the game look like it was just released you know a year ago i mean you look at that game there's you have the base game which obviously is great in itself but then once you're finished with that you can just dive into this world of mods that just add so much more content to your game and you know it is free of charge as it stands right now. Bethesda games are games that also thrive with mods. I mean, the likes of Skyrim and Fallout have, you know, had such great mod support in the past. And for me especially, the reason I bought a PC version of Skyrim was because I wanted to try out mods and stuff. I wouldn't have bothered buying it had mods not been available or had I had to pay for them. And so I, I feel like in the long run, Bethesda is really only doing themselves a disservice by trying to stop people from creating free mods for their games. And, you know, I, I really feel like their games wouldn't live as long as they do without the help of modders. So, you know, I, I really, it really surprises me Bethesda's going down this route. I, I feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot here. And I really hope that, you know, in the next few months, the, the club gets sorted out and they listen to gamers' feedback and they respond accordingly. So, Bethesda, if you're seeing this, I hope you listen to the consumers and do what's right by them.